There is power working in the blood of the Lamb. There is power working in the precious blood of the Lamb.
Good morning. Thanks for joining with us for worship here at South Pymatumi Community Church. And as we worship today and study God's Word via various social media, I would imagine it's possible that most of us find ourselves in various states, perhaps a state of despair, maybe fear, certainly frustrated uh, over what's going on with the co coronavirus and all of the situations with it. You know, for those of us handling jobs and dealing with children at home, pressures are even more difficult, I'm sure. Plus, who knew that our kids ate so much food when they were at school every day? We've challenged you this past week in our messages on how to pray, how to worship God during this time. And today, we would like to examine some ways to deal with all of this challenge and reflect upon God's goodness and the glory of God in our lives. You know, praising God can cause us to have a better experience of joy and happiness in our lives. And it's a lesson for us to have some peace or a sense of peace during this time of storm. And I'm going to encourage you to follow in the word this morning as we study together. Well, let's ask God's blessing as we gather together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to worship you, to study your word together. And I pray, Father, that as we examine uh, this aspect of giving you glory and praise, even in this time of crisis in our nation, in our own communities, that you certainly would be present in our lives. Thank you for being with us. Thank you that we have this opportunity to worship together. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask if you would to take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 98 this morning. We'll be there in just a few moments. And as we study together, I would examine and ask us to think about a life lesson of praise in God's glory. A life lesson in praise in God's glory this morning. And as we do that, let's examine together as we look at the scriptures how we can better give praise to God. I think the first thing that we would ask ourselves, the question is, why should I give praise to God? Why should that be something that I'd be concerned about? Even now in this situation, I think first of all, it's because <clears throat> as the psalmist says in Psalm 150 and verse 6, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. The Bible commands us to praise God. In times of stress, in times of difficulty, certainly in good times, we give praise to God for what he has done in our lives. But it's sometimes difficult when we're ready to expel our children from homeschooling right now to give praise and glory to God. But we should. For some of you, this may be the first time in a long while where you've had an opportunity to sit down as a family and enjoy a meal together. You know, the Bible commands us in all aspects to give praise to him. But I think secondly, it also Praise helps us to facilitate our access to God. The psalmist again says in verse 4 of Psalm 100, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And we often use that verse to <clears throat> reflect when we're in church or in a church service. But think about it in terms of your own home, in terms of your own life. Our perpetual praise provides a clear passage into God's presence. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19 reminds us, to have boldness because we have the opportunity to enter the very presence of God himself because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. What a, what a joyous blessing in our own lives to, to understand that as we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, we have direct access into Almighty God's presence. So praise the Lord for that and examine that in your own life and in your family's life during this time. I think again, why give praise to God? Not only because the Bible commands it, not only because it helps facilitate our access to God, but thirdly, praise actually is a weapon against Satan. You know, sometimes we get depressed. Sometimes we have those situations in our lives when Satan himself is causing us to even doubt our own relationship with God. And as we think about that, I would remind you that in Isaiah 14, Satan was once the chorus leader of praise in heaven. And yet because of his sin, God ejected him from his very presence. And today, Satan hates praise because it reminds him of what he gave up, what he can't regain in the presence of God. So use praise as a weapon, even against Satan and the challenges that he might bring in our own lives every single day. You know, as we praise God for what he has given us in the past, don't let the perils of today stop you from praising God for what he has done. 
Many of us during Thanksgiving time, we, we'll sit around the table and, and we'll go around that table and we'll, we'll give thanks for certain little things and we'll ask our children or our grandchildren to do that as well. Let me encourage you to think about doing that at your next family meal. Here on Sunday, take an opportunity to, to give thanks to God for something. Go around the table and enjoy the presence and the praise of God. So why give praise to God? Because he commands it, because it facilitates our access to God, because it's a weapon even against Satan, but I think also, fourthly, because God is worthy of our praise. I had you turn to Psalm 98 a few moments ago, and I would like you to take a look, if you would, at these eight verses and reflect upon the praise and encouragement that we have in this passage. The psalmist says, as we read, beginning in verse 1, O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation, his righteousness he has revealed in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Bring forth in song, rejoice and sing praises. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of a psalm, with trumpets and the sound of a horn. Shout joyfully before the Lord, the King. Let the sea roar in all its fullness, the world and all those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord. We, God's people, are here to praise and glorify God. And while it's good to praise and encourage other people, you know, God alone deserves our praise and our worship at this time. And we have something to sing about. We have something to praise God for. We, we have the opportunity, whether it be privately or perfectly soon corporately again, to be able to worship God. Perhaps in music or writing a poem or expressing our thanks to God in writing. You know, the hymn writer in in our particular hymn, it's page 106, and it's praise him, <clears throat> praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. And I think most of you probably know the first verse of this hymn, so I'm going to encourage you to sing along with me this morning, as long as you don't send any comments a little bit later on uh, as a result of what we do. But let's sing together the first stanza of praise him, praise him, and think about the words of what Jesus is saying to us, even in this hymn. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O earth, His wonderful love proclaim. Hail Him, hail Him, highest archangels in glory. Strength and honor give to His holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard His children. In his arms he carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. You know, just sing that hymn and think about the words. What an opportunity to give praise to God right now because of who he is. The second verse of that hymn goes like this. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins he suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail him, hail him, Jesus the crucified. Sound his praises, Jesus who bore our sorrows. Love unbounded, wonderful, deep and strong. That aspect of hailing him there in that verse reminds us of just a few weeks from now. As we think about Palm Sunday and the presence of God as he came into Jerusalem and the people. In, and as Christ even said, the rocks would shout forth praise and glory to him. The third stanza says, praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed redeemer. Heavenly portals loud with hosannas ring. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown him, crown him, prophet priest and king and here's the hope of our glory christ is coming over the world victorious power and glory unto the lord belong and even as justified saying a few moments ago there is victory in jesus because of who he is praise him praise him tell of his excellent greatness 
Praise Him, praise Him ever in joyful song. Let's continue to praise God because He commands us to do that. I think secondly, we were created to bring glory to God. John Piper put it this way when he said that we, as why did God create the universe in us? God made the universe <clears throat> for His glory. Grasp this thought. God made you and I to shed light on His glory to other people. I mean, that, that's just amazing. The prophet Isaiah uh, in his book, as he writes to the children of Israel and, and, and speaks of various aspects of creation and what God has done, gives us examples of how to praise God. I want to share just a couple of those with you this morning. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 8. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another. Chapter 44, verse 23. The prophet again says this. Sing, O heavens, for the Lord has done it. Shout, you lower parts of the earth. Bring forth into singing your mountains, O forest, and every tree in it. We sing that chorus about Jesus and Christ owning, if you would, the trees, the, the wealth on a thousand mount hills. And, and as we think about creation itself and the promise of and the aspect of praise, continue to think over in the 61st chapter, the prophet continues to speak throughout his book. And in chapter 61, beginning in verse 1, we read, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. By application, those that are imprisoned by whatever aspect of, of fear or whatever thing that may in, enhance or, or hold them in their, in their relationship to God. He continues on in verse 2 that he was created to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. We are here to glorify God. He has put us on this earth to bring him praise and to bring him glory. Again, in the scriptures, if you have your Bibles, Ephesians chapter 2, the first 10 verses, we are reminded of this new position that we have in Jesus Christ once we have believed on him for our eternal salvation. He begins, Paul says in verse 1, You he made alive <clears throat> who were dead in trespasses and sins. You once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, Satan himself. And we all conducted ourselves in this lust of the flesh, he says. But in verse 4, But God, who is rich in his mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, our sins, he made us alive together with Christ and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Why? That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. And then those verses that most of us are familiar with, beginning in verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and then not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone would boast. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We have a new position with God because of what Christ did for us on the cross. And as we think about that, family, and we understand that walk, it's, it's in my walk that God wants to use me for His glory in everything that I do. God created the world, and in that, He could be glorified by us. Our creation itself brings glory to God. And we are then to display our glory or God's glory as a result of our lives. We're reflectors. We are images. We are calling attention to God. That's, that's why we are here. God is the reason for our living. We then point others to the glory of Almighty God. 
Enjoy the glory because God is glorified in us and, and be encouraged by God's presence. Know his presence today. Thank him for that as you worship there in your homes. We're not making God glorious. He is glorious. And we reflect that glory and we share it with the rest of the world. Listen, friends, God is in control. Fear not because he is on the throne. The scriptures remind us that as we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be saved. We can have that eternal assurance in Jesus Christ by believing on his very name. And then understanding, as we do, what he has done for us on the cross. We are here to give praise and glory to Almighty God. So I want to encourage you to begin today and this whole week. Bring praise and glory to God by your life. Yet, Yes, even in spite of this virus, in spite of the fact that we're quarantined and we find it hard to even live with our own family. Praise God. Allow the joy of Almighty God to overflow in our hearts. Let me encourage you this week. Pray for one another. Pray for our leaders. Pray for our president and his team as they work on solutions and, and how to best handle this crisis in our nation. Pray for the professionals who are, who are working in this medical field. Pray for our first responders, our nurses and our doctors as they deal with the circumstances surrounding this. Pray for those that are already infected and, and pray for God's protection over others. Let me encourage you to, to reach out, especially to those, yes, of our, senior, of our senior friends in the church and other areas in your community, in your neighborhood. Check on them. Ask them if you can go shopping for them or do various things for them. But think about how you, in your own protection, can best serve other people. And as thus, glorify God this week. Heavenly Father, I pray for your presence. I pray for your peace in our hearts. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would encourage us through your word. Help us to give glory to God this week, this day, because not only of what he has done for us on the cross and allowing his son to die for us, but now, Father, we are images, we are reflectors of you. And I pray, Father, that in our hearts and in our families and in our little groups together this day and throughout this week, that we would be able to give you glory and honor and praise for who you are and for what you are doing in our lives. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. We praise you for who you are and for your presence. Might you be glorified in all that we do. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. May God bless you and may God be glorified in our lives this week. Reach out to others and allow him to be praised and glorified in all that we do. Lord willing, we'll see you together for corporate worship very soon. God bless.